Okay, hello, welcome back. We're going to do the last instalment in our book today. The last two chapters we're going to do them together because this one's a little bit shorter. I've got my reading hat on, I've got my reading companion. So I'm set and I'm ready to go and I'm ready to finish up our reading book. This chapter is called See You in the Tumble Downs. And it starts with this picture. It was a small cart, pulled by a particularly ill-tempered gruff. But it was all the clockmaker could find at such short notice. Not surprising, really, when you considered how it had ended, he thought bitterly. What with the trunk of tools and his favourite clock, there was barely enough space for him, let alone his passenger. Careful those elbows, Euphemia Golden Curls complained as they went over the latest series of bumps in the forest track. The bottom's fallen out of the giant, say in business, she complained. Not for the first time. What are we going to do now? We, said the clockmaker, raising an eyebrow. Yes, we, insisted Euphemia, tossing aside the golden wig and raking her fingers through her short black hair. And you can call me Euphemia Ravenhair now. Like it or not, you've got a sidekick. The clockmaker attempted to make a thin smile. This beamish girl had her faults, but she was persistent. He admitted that. Well, Euphemia Ravenhair, he said, reaching out a, a protecting arm to steady the clock. What we do next rather depends on him. He nodded at the driver of the cart, a large cat in expensive looking boots. And the elves, of course. Zam circled the square on the back of his cloud horse. Below, the, latest, the last of the tin men were being loaded onto the wagons, ready to be taken back to the foundry. The brass bands of Nightingale were going to make a spectacular comeback when the metal was recycled. And in the distance, actually, I'll show you that picture there. Zam on his cloud horse. In the distance, another cloud horse had come into view over the farmlands on the other side of the river, and Zam flew towards it. Phoebe waved to Zam her cello in its case securely strapped to her back as the cloud horse swooped past. A few moments later, Bathsheba's cloud horse appeared, diving through the clouds to join them. So we did it, she called out, waving her warple sword triumphantly. The piper has his rats back, the Grand Duchess is waiting to see you, Zam. And the giants are waiting to see you, Phoebe called to Bathsheba as she flew past. They were having a party with the townsfolk when I left and there was no sign of Euphemia. You'll find the cat orchestra tuning up in Clock Tower Square, Zam told Phoebe, as the cloud horses fell into formation. They want you to play at a midnight concert with them as loudly as you can, and they said you'd understand. The cloud horses on either side swooped to the right and to the left, and Zam carried straight on. See you in the tumble downs, he called over his shoulder to Phoebe and Bathsheba. And the final chapter is called watching over us. Begins with that picture there of Zam. Are you sure you won't change your mind, Balthazar Boab said. After all, the League of Rats has gone. Bakery number nine is open for business again, thanks to you. How did you get the Grand Duchess to pardon me? Zam smiled. I took her for a ride on my cloud horse. Just round the trout wine crags, and she was so delighted, she asked what she could do for me in return. Zam shook Balthazar's hands. Thank you for the job offer, but I have a bakery of my own now, he explained. In the tumble downs, said Balthazar Boab thoughtfully. A strange part of the world, but if you change your mind, you'll always have a job here with me. We won't change our minds, said Langdale, the goat boy. I'm looking forward to seeing the tumble downs for myself. Now where's that cloud horse of yours? He added, looking out the window, window of bakery number nine. He comes when I need him, said Zam. That's all I know. Now pick up your bags, Langdale. There's a water badger I want you to meet. And there's a beautiful picture there of the tumble downs. I'm going to miss you, Phoebe, my dear, said Madame Arpeggio, wiping away a tear. And so will the cat orchestra. They were standing on the steps of Fairweather House, 
and behind them the cats waved and meowed their goodbyes. Do come back and visit us soon, Madame Arpeggio, stroking the music case that Phoebe was holding. Both of you. We will, said Phoebe, turning reluctantly to go. Is it true that you have a flying horse that takes you everywhere, just like that boy in Clock Tower Square? asked Madame Arpeggio. Only when I really need her, said Phoebe, with a smile. It's a gruff cart to spindle fools for me, and then I'm meeting a water badger and some friends. Bean certainly has changed since your friends paid us a visit, said Mrs Mahalia. The Society of Giant Slayers has been run out of town, but they're still out there somewhere, so you take care. I will, said Bathsheba, gazing up at the Boot House orphanage, and I'll come back to see you on market days, she added with a smile. With Grizel Barkfire and Budley Bristletoe, asked Miss Mahalia, eyes twinkling. The market's really something to look forward to now that the giants are bringing us gifts from the forest. Bathsheba gazed up at the sky. Are you expecting a flying horse to sweep down and carry you away? Miss Mahalia asked before enveloping Bathsheba in a great big hug. She'll come when I need her, said Bathsheba. It's what cloud horses do. She smiled and hugged Miss Mahalia and then stepped back. They always watch over you. And I'll see you in the last two pictures. In our book, and that is... I believe there's just the last little bit here. The cloud horses circled high in the sky above the forever tree. Then as dawn broke, they spread their wings and followed the others into the distant, distant cloud pastures. The covered wagon belonging to the Ursine Ballet Troop of the West drew up outside the workshop, in the roots of the forever tree. The old woman was waiting. Let's have some porridge, she said to the bears. They went inside and sat at a workbench while the old woman served up breakfast. Then she sat down with the three bears and picked up a spoon. The porridge wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold, it was just right. And that is the end of our book. What a lovely story that is. Now, we'll find out what next ones we're going to do. I've already got one in mind for what we're going to do. But that's the end of our Guardians of Magic. What a fabulous book. Anyway, take care and speak to you soon.